Hello, just doing a quick uh, bit of math here. Handy tool to have a calculator. And uh, it leads us to kind of wonder uh, what people did in old Japan when they needed to uh, do some calculations. Merchants and uh, the like. The answer was the Japanese abacus. These are called, so these devices are called soroban in Japanese. And uh, they're a very uh, common tool from uh, the um, Prior, prior to the 20th, start of the 20th century, and they did indeed linger in Japan in common use so well into the uh, mid to late 20th century, and it's still possible to find people using them today. And uh, Soroban are actually uh, taught in schools, although uh, not this type of Soroban, this is a different type. Let me go over what I mean. Of course, uh, Soroban, if you're familiar with uh, how abacuses work, you use beads, it's a bead numbering system, and you can use the uh, beads to uh, be placeholders for numbers and do addition, subtraction, multiplication, and uh, do them all very quick. Um, Japanese uh, Soroban come in three basic types, and you can determine the uh, age of a Soroban based on the um, type of uh, bead count that it has. The oldest type of bead count will have uh, the uh, f um, five beads on this side and then two beads on this side over here. And those Soroban, if you find a Soroban like that, it probably dates prior to 1850. Because in 1850 in Japan, uh, the Japanese switched to this type of Soroban, which has the uh, five beads here and the single bead on this side. This type of bead count remained in effect from 1850 until 1930, and then in 1930 the Japanese government uh, switched to a 1-4 bead count when all of the uh, uh, textbooks for schools were revised. So when you pick up an abacus in Japan, uh, you can fairly accurately uh, determine its uh, age, uh, or at least the uh, range of its age, by counting the number of beads. This abacus has the one five bead count, so this is an 1850 to 1930 model. The abacus is made of uh, wood. Um, commonly we see abacus with uh, oak on the bottom and boxwood sides and boxwood beads, although there are variations and I honestly can't tell exactly what this one is. It could, could be oak. Um, it's dark. The uh, patina is very rich and dark, so it's a little hard to tell. And the grain, the grain has an appearance like oak, but it's a little tight for oak, so I'm not sure. The beads um, are wood as well, and the although so, some uh, abacus will have um, actually, in fact, those are those do ap indeed appear to be um, shaved bamboo runners. At first, I thought these were uh, brass runners, but they appear to be the ba uh, bamboo type. I need to uh, get my glasses to uh, really tell for sure, but I think that these may in fact be the shaved bamboo uh, type of little runners here. That's a very special item when you can find the bamboo type. A lot of work goes into making a piece of bamboo nice and straight and round so that the beads can slip on it. I'll uh, check it more closely and uh, make an accurate note in the listing about what I think it really is. I'm pretty sure now that it's bamboo. Anyway, uh, the beads uh, move well on the bamboo, and uh, you can hear them rattling about. It's in uh, fairly good condition. It is a bit dusty and quite dark from age. The uh, one bit of damage that uh, is, is important to note is here on the back. You can see how it kind of comes away. You see how that is? It's loose. The back, the underside of the abacus is held in place to the sides in, through bamboo pin right here. It's hard, a little hard to see, but there's actually a bamboo pin that holds the uh, back in place. And there was another bamboo pin on this side, and that the bamboo pin on this side has broken. And this allows the uh, back to separate a little bit. You have to handle it with uh, this abacus with care to avoid the back, the other pin breaking and the uh, back coming off permanently. For that reason, I recommend this as a display item only. There's some Japanese writing on the back. Um, probably this is the name of uh, um, um, uh, the... There we go. <laughs> this is probably the name of the proprietor, or this is probably a merchant's abacus, and it's probably the name of the store or a business where this abacus was was used. And in addition, these are carved actually. This, these kanji characters are carved. I, I can't make out the meaning, but um, it's very interesting that they're, that they're carved. I love that fact. But along the edges here, these black marks, if you look at them very closely, I don't know if it'll show up well on this camera, 
but it appears to be brush applied calligraphy writing. So additional writing there. Now, I may be wrong. Again, like I said, my eyes are a little iffy, but I'm pretty sure that this is actual writing there as well. Um, very nice. I really like that. I love, I love finding old writing on items here in Japan. There are some uh, chips in some of the beads. You can see uh, this bead right here has a chip in it. It's about the largest chip in any of the beads. Altogether, a very nice abacus. A little small for its size. A lot of abacus are, uh, are bigger or longer or fatter or thicker. Like this one here is a little bit long, quite a bit longer. So this is a small one, a little portable one. Maybe it was used for carrying around, uh, for taking one's business on the road. Thanks for dropping by and having a look. I hope you uh, enjoyed learning about uh, Japanese soroban. Please let us know if you have any questions. Take care for now. Bye-bye.